Hey creators, today I'm going to show you guys how to use mega lights in the new Unreal Engine. So if you're plugged in with the Unreal Engine world, you've probably noticed that there's been a huge release with Unreal Engine 5.5. This update has a ton of cool stuff in it, but today I just want to talk about the one that is my favorite, which is Mega Lights. And really quick, I'm going to assume that you know how to use Unreal Engine in this video, but if you've never opened it before, don't worry, we actually have an intro to Unreal Engine video, which is designed for people who have never even downloaded the program. So if you want to get caught up with that really quick before trying out this tutorial, then go watch this video right here. The link will be down in the description. So Unreal Engine is a real-time rendering engine and game engine. So it is a lot faster at rendering videos than something like Maya or Blender, but it is possible to make your scene so complex that it doesn't render real-time anymore. And one of those things that can slow it down is adding a ton of lights to your scene. But with a new Mega Lights feature, all you have to do is turn on a checkbox, and suddenly you're able to add thousands of lights to your scene with almost no performance cost. But you might be asking, why am I making a whole tutorial if it's just turning on a checkbox? But there's one more really cool, really flashy feature that comes with Mega Lights that I want to show you guys how to use, and that's animated textures on lights. So let's jump in and I'll show you how to do it. So for this to work, you need at least Unreal Engine 5.5. Okay, I'm going to open up one of my projects and I've got this really cool studio with like a little living room scene set up and we can see we got production crate up on the screen, but it's a still image and I really want to use mega lights to make a moving image on this TV screen and I want it to cast light into the scene in a realistic way. So really quick, we want to activate mega lights by going up to project settings and just search for mega lights at the top and make sure you turn on that checkbox. And that's all you have to do. Just by doing that, it makes all the lights in your scene a lot cheaper to render. Okay, now in my content folder, I'm gonna right click and add a new folder and I'll name this video clips. And then I'll just drag and drop my video into that folder. I'll click on it and save it. Also make sure you give it a good name if it doesn't already have one. Next, I'm gonna right click and go down to media and I'm gonna add a media player. Now it's very important that we turn on this little checkbox that says video output media texture asset because that texture asset is what's going to add all the color to our lights. So I'll press OK. And again, let's be sure to name this. I'll give it the same name, but add underscore player. Notice that it created two new assets for us, a texture and the player. Let's go into the player and we can click on the media that we want it to play. If you've imported more than one video, you'll see all of them here. So make sure you click on the right one. So I'll double click it and I can see that the video starts playing. OK, let's set it to loop over here on the right and we'll save the asset and close it. So next we need to create an actual material that uses this texture. So let's right click and create a new material. Don't forget to name it. And then double click on it to open it up. And let's drag the media texture asset into the material graph. And I'm gonna plug the RGB into the base color and I'll hit save. And we can close this window. And then click on the TV and I'll scroll down to the material slot, which is the screen and I'll search for that material that we just created. In this case, it's called Pcrate Chris YouTube Player Video Mat. Okay, so we can see it applied the material, but it's not glowing. So let's go into our material and just make sure that the color is also plugged into the emissive color right here. And I'll save my material and close it. So now it's actually glowing. If we press play though, I don't see the video start to move, so there's one last thing we need to do before this will work. Let's press stop and let's go into the level blueprint. The quickest way to get there is to click on this icon and go to open level blueprint. Now you may not have anything in your scene, but this level already has some things set up. So if you don't see this little red box that says event begin play, then just right click and search for event begin play and add it to the graph. Now we also need a variable. So over here on the left where it says variables, I'll press plus and we don't need a Boolean. So I'll click on this and I'll search for media player object reference. Let's also name this. I named mine Pcrate Chris YouTube Media Player. It's kind of a long name, but that's all right. Now, if I click on this, I don't see any options for it. That's because we have to actually compile our blueprint first. So I'll click on compile. And now I have the option to plug in the video, the media player that we created. Okay, let's drag and drop our variable onto the graph and say get media player. And then I'll click on this little blue output and drag and drop it into empty space and I'll search for open source. Inside the open source, I'll select the asset, which again is the video of Chris. And don't forget to plug the execution pin from your event begin play into the open source. Let's hit compile and save. Now when I press play, I can see that the video is playing on the TV. 
Now, if I turn down the sun so the room goes dark, I can see it is actually emitting some light into the scene, but it's really just a reflection on the floor. It's not actually emitting like a bunch of bright light. You can see it's not lighting up the couch or anything. So that's where we're gonna use a mega light to really sell this effect. So I'll press stop and let's go add an object by clicking on this little plus sign and I'll search for rect light. And you can see that we get this little flat, basically an area light. So I'm gonna go put this right on the front of the TV facing outward. And then over here in the settings where it says source width and source height, I can hold down control and click and drag that to make some small adjustments and increase the size until it fits about the size of the screen. Okay, so now we're getting light being cast into the scene, but it doesn't match the video. So the very last thing we need to do is plug our texture that we created into this source texture on the light. So I'm gonna grab the one that says media texture at the bottom, drag and drop it right there. I can see the color of the light has changed to match the video. And if I press play, I can see that the light is being cast into the scene, but it's animating and changing color to match what's happening on the video screen. So this is an incredibly powerful new technique that Unreal Engine 5.5 is able to do. And of course we can always click on our rectangular light and do things like increase the intensity, maybe change the barn door angles to make it more of a spotlight. Whatever you could normally do to lights, you can do to this light, but when you press play, it'll be animated. Another interesting use for this technique is to create things like fire using video assets. So if you don't want to spend the time doing really time consuming and expensive fluid simulations or fire simulations in Unreal, you can actually just plug in a video of fire. And this one's actually just a looping fire asset from Footage Crate. Now because it's flat on a 2D plane, I recommend putting it inside of a fireplace because if your player is able to walk around behind it or next to it, you'll be able to tell that it's flat. But for background accents that cast real light into the scene, this is a really good technique. And I set this up exactly the same way with one small difference. When creating the material for the fire, you can see I plugged the color into the emissive just like I did with that TV example. But on the material itself, I set the blend mode to additive so that it would be semi-transparent. Another really fun idea for this is to create a really spooky scene with a glitching TV. So you can use this for your horror games or your survival games. Now, really quick, I just want to tell you how I made this. This is a TV from Render Crate, which I imported into Unreal Engine. And the glitchy effect on the TV was actually created in After Effects using a couple Production Crate plugins. So first I used the Render Crate plugin to import the skull directly into After Effects and just gave it a quick animation. And then I inverted it and applied a couple of effects using the LaForge suite. So first I applied the hologram effect to give it sort of a scan line look. And then I really wanted it to flicker with a bunch of different colors to really show off this lighting effect in Unreal Engine. So I applied the new Hyper Glitch plugin and cranked up the settings like crazy to make it as flickery and strobey as possible. And you can see that the results look pretty cool. All right, and that was pretty simple, right? Not too difficult, but incredibly powerful. And this opens up a ton of possibilities for really cool short films or really creepy or exciting game environments. So if you make anything cool with this, be sure to share it with us on our Discord or tag us on Instagram with it. All right, later creators.